See our full lineup of stainless steel toolboxes on grizzly.com. I'm going to kick off part three by working on the top to the wine hutch. And I'm going to get that from a long piece of four quarter cherry. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut off the end of the uh, four quarter board where there's a lot of checking and there's a knot right here. So I'm going to lose this section right here and then I'm going to measure out for the material that I need and cut the other side. So I'm gonna get the top from both of these boards, but uh, the width of these boards are close to 12 inches wide. So instead of trying to flatten 12 inches of board, I'm going to rip each of these in half and then glue all four boards back together for the top. And I think it'll look really nice. And because both of these boards or both of these halves were from the same length of board, everything should match really nicely. So the next thing I'm gonna do is get a nice flat and straight edge on one side and then I'll rip it in half at the table saw. So before I cut these boards a rough width for the glue up and essentially cut them in half, I'm going to cut off one edge of this board because there's some really nasty cracking on this one side. So I'm gonna cut this off and then I'll cut it down the middle. I made the top about an eighth of an inch too wide. So I'm gonna split that difference and I'm gonna rip the same amount of material off of each edge. With the exception of the back edges of the top, I'm gonna to use a 3 16 inch radius round over bit on the bottom edges. And on the top, I'm gonna to use an eighth inch radius round over bit. I need to make a frame in the back of the wine hutch and it's gonna serve two purposes. It's going to support the lower shelf in the back of the wine hutch and it's also gonna support the drawer runners all the way in the back. So that's what I'm gonna work on next.
I have the frame temporarily clamped in the back of the case. And as I mentioned earlier, this frame is going to support the lower shelf. And it's also going to support the drawer supports and the center drawer guides. And it's the drawer supports and the drawer guides that I'm going to work on next. In order to get the drawer supports to fit in properly to the rabbits that I just finished chopping out with a chisel, I need to remove some material from each end of each drawer support. And I'm going to do that using a stacked dado set at the table saw. And in order to control the length of the lip that I'm going to be creating, I'm going to use my rip fence to, as a stop as I push the work over top of the dado blade. And now, this is probably one of the very few times where doing a cross-cutting action at the table saw you, with your workpiece pushed up against the fence is okay. Um, when it becomes problematic when you're actually cutting some material off and that material can get jammed in between the blade and the fence and it can cause kickback. So this is a dry assembly of the system that's going to support the lower shelf and it's also going to support both drawers. So I'm going to stop part three here and next time I'm going to pick up with both drawers. So hopefully for the next video I should have both drawers finished and uh, I'll start working on the shelves. So I hope you guys will come back for part four and if you're not already subscribed to my channel I hope you'll consider subscribing. See you all next time. Be sure to check out my Amazon affiliate store where you'll find a lot of the tools that I use in my shop. You'll also find a brief description of the tool and what I think of it. You'll find a link to my Amazon store in the description of the video.